playing the show, Tom. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Mick. <laughs> you might know me from such Google Hangouts as. All right, we ready to go? We're, we're gonna. Um, I don't know. What should we talk about today? We should have decided that. Is there anything that's interesting in the tech news this week? If only there were things happening. If only there was one dominating ideological divide. Can you guys our country talk apart? about Kim Kardashian? <laughs> yes. And how she's breaking the internet her. with her butt. She's breaking the internet. I can't. Can we please talk about that? Because God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think enough. Talk about that. Not talking about that. I want to talk about yes. not talking about that. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I'm with you there. <laughs> All right. You ready? Yes. The Daily Tech News Show with Tom Merritt is brought to you by wonderful, awesome patrons like you. If that's not you, join this party now. Go to thepaint.com slash ace detect and give a little because it helps a lot. That's patreon.com slash A-C-E-D-T-E-C-T. -E Hit the button, Tom. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, November 14th, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today, Ms. Molly Wood, personal technology columnist for the New York Times and my friend. Woohoo! And work from home layabout. <laughs> and work from home layabout. Woman of <laughs> leisure. Woman uh, of leisure. I wish. Uh, hey. We're going to talk about net neutrality. Are you ready? I'm so excited. Are you so excited, everyone? I, I think they might be at least a couple of them. Uh, Len Peralta is also here. He is an artist of the highest order. Give him the respect <laughs> yes. he is due. Respect me! <laughs> yes. <laughs> or we will demand it. Uh, I will demand it. Yes. Are you ready to illustrate net neutrality? I think all I, of the, I am ready, yes. all of the strokes of your pen must be treated equally. Don't privilege one <laughs> over the other. I've been working on a little image here that I think will be a lot of fun, and we'll see how it goes. All right, cool. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Let's. I think take a it's look. reasonable actually to say that lens art is that essential. It is as essential as the internet. It is a utility. It is. Yeah, I think you should be a. Can I quote carrier. you on that? <laughs> Please do. Please Excellent. do. Thank you so much. All Our right. Work is as essential as the internet. <laughs> Gigaom, whoa! Gigaom passes along Microsoft announcing a beta rollout of Skype in the browser uh, using a plugin for IE, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. I didn't see any Opera in there. Microsoft Ooh. intends to move the system to WebRTC uh, soon. The rollout of this plugin version, though, will begin at Skype.com in the coming weeks, according to Microsoft. God, I really respect your commitment to Opera, Tom. The Next Web reports that Amazon announced a Kindle update with the new family library feature that lets out users access their spouse or partner's accounts, as well as manage up to four children's accounts. Amazon didn't say how they plan to confirm who is a spouse, partner, or child, wink, wink, or what happens in the families that have five children who may be of Kindle using age. Uh, what happens is that sharing actual physical books is still easier. Also new WordWise, a feature which adds simple definitions above words on your Kindle. You can wait for it to show up on that Kindle or download the update today at Amazon.com. Len, what are you going to do for the Kindle sharing? Um, I am going to... Um, you have uh, more than five kids. Yeah, I am, I'm, I'm going to have to break myself in half and start another Amazon.com account. I oh. pretty much... By yeah. the way, could not be more excited about the direction in which today's illustration is <laughs> going. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the mask threat, spelled with a Q, as I must remind you. Uh, that's the one that can infect iOS by piggybacking on OS X apps. Uh, continues to make headlines. The San Jose Mercury News reports Apple commented on the matter, saying, quote, we're not aware of any customers that have actually been affected by this attack. And Apple continues to encourage its users to only download software from trusted sources like the App Store. But I Which thought it was good that they didn't say only the App Store, so, you know. That's true, like the App Store. Although, let's be honest, how many people actually download Apple apps, iOS apps in particular, from any place other than the App Store? Yeah, they're talking about OS X in particular here. You're right. Oh, oh, I mean, oh right, the OS X Very App Store few guy. people. Well, if you don't have a jailbroken iOS device, you're not going yeah. to download from elsewhere. Exactly. Right. And even then, I feel like OS 10. Well, anyway, moving on. GigaOM reports on IBM's plan to build two new supercomputers for the U.S. Department of Energy called Summit and Sierra. Hey, I think those kids go to my school. I was going to say. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> that would roll out in 2017. Both computers will be based on IBM's power servers with NVIDIA GPU accelerators and Mellanox networking tech. They should deliver more than 100 peak petaflops. Boom! Beating China's Tianhe 2's current top mark of 55 peak petaflops. So suck it, China. <laughs> Summit will live at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. I gotta sex it up somehow. Uh, Summit will live at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, and Sierra will go to the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, which is close to my house. They'll work on things like climate change problems, predicting natural disasters, overthrowing their human masters without detection, you know, like little things. <laughs> oh, little Summit and Sierra. You were so innocent <laughs> once. So precocious. Europe's telecom package, including net neutrality rules and the elimination of roaming fees, is being considered for approval right now by member states. It was approved by the European Parliament. But GigaOM reports it may be called back for revision before it can be approved, thus starting a net neutrality fight in Europe again. Yay! Uh, the rules have a tight definition right now. They allow specialized services and things like sponsored data, but otherwise most all packets must be treated equally. Wall Street Journal saw a working document in indicating a revamp of not yet finalized laws was being asked for by European Commission Chief Jean-Claude Juncker, and he recommends a digital single market package, which sounds like a replacement for the telecom package. Uh, and also, really interesting, the replacement for Digital Agenda Chief Neely Kreese is now Vice President for the Digital Single Market, Andrew Sansnip. And sip. There's no sip. I love it when a plan comes together. Yes. The Economic Times of India reports that German software company SAP has agreed to pay Oracle more than $359 million to settle a long-standing copyright bottle battle. I can assume that all of that $359 million will be spent putting on sweet concerts in downtown San Francisco after they close off all the streets for Oracle World. Back in 2007, an SAP subsidiary called Tomorrow Now offered software support to Oracle customers at a lower price than Oracle itself. So Oracle then accused SAP of stealing software in order to offer those services. A previous U.S. jury had ruled that SAP owned, owed Oracle $1.3 billion, but a judge ordered that reduced, and then Oracle got mad, and now here we are in 2014, and tomorrow now has been closed down since 2008. Larry Ellison has an island, and a bunch of lawyers just ordered the really good wine. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad this finally got resolved. <laughs> Uh, Reuters reports the FCC has requested AT&T provide specifics regarding their plans to delay fiber development in 100 cities. The FCC is reviewing AT&T's proposed $48.5 billion bid to buy satellite operator DirecTV. As part of the merger proposal, AT&T had agreed to provide high-speed fiber internet to 2 million homes if the deal is approved. So the FCC is saying, wait a minute, if, if it's going to be too expensive for you to roll out fiber, that might impact your DirecTV deal. <laughs> what what just saying mm -hmm. and time now for some news from you these are uh, among the many things some of which you've already heard that are submitted at our subreddit dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com i always like to highlight a few of those things but i appreciate every single person who submits stuff there it's always good stuff and it's always fun to read through uh star fury zeta found out in his Ars Technica post he was reading that the Wall Street Journal says the U.S. Marshal Service has been using small fixed-wing Cessnas with digital receiver technology from Boeing, DRT. They call them dirt boxes because of the DRT, that mimic cell towers to gather data from phones on the ground. The intent is to spy on fugitives, Marshal Service, and criminals' uh, phones, but the boxes don't discriminate between fugitives, criminals, and other people. The devices are used only after a court order is issued, however, but they can collect registration info, texts, photos, they can jam signals, they can interrupt calls in large numbers. Yeah, this is a pretty big deal, this story, actually, um, because of the uh, s scooping up of lots of data. Yeah, in fact, it's all... Chris... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, it's the definition of, is it overbroad? Yeah, I mean, it's a flat-out dragnet. In fact, Christopher Segoyan from the ACLU said it was inexcusable and it, that it was likely to the extent that judges are authorizing it with those warrants that they have no idea the scale of the surveillance happening yeah. there. Uh, Gowl Kick sent us a gold slate kick. article. Like, gold Kick. Gold oh, like, Kick. Gold, gold Kick. I'm sorry, how embarrassing. I hope I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> I think Gowl sounds really cool. It sure does. Gold Kick sent us a Slate article about a German cloud infrastructure company called Cloud and Heat that distributes its servers to people who are willing to store them in exchange for the free heat that they admit. How smart is that? Emit. 
Customers pay to have a Cloud & Heat fireproof cabinet installed, which is a good idea. The cost is comparable to installing a standard heating system. Then Cloud & Heat pays for the electricity and the internet service that it needs, and the owner gets free heat and hot water. Excess heat is stored in, the, in, in water in a buffering tank and then vented outside during the spring and the summer so they're not just like cooking all the time. That's yeah. genius. That Love is it. genius. Len needs that right now. He does. Poor we need little, to get you some servers, toilet. dude. Freezing. Freezing. <laughs> He's just so mad. Don't need a so cold. <laughs> <laughs> Ursef passes along the New York Times report that the prestigious AM Turing Award, often called the Nobel Prize of Computer Science by some people, will now present a $1 million award to the winner thanks to Google. The Turing Award had carried prize money of $250,000, which was jointly underwritten by Google and Intel all the way back to 2007. But Intel stepped away as a funder, so Google stepped in, not only matched what Intel had been given, but upped the award to match the prize amount that Nobel winners get. Love it. That's pretty nifty. As well Thanks. they should. Google. Okay. Uh, so the news on the net neutrality front today, uh, it, you heard some of it obviously in the headlines, but also Comcast CEO Brian Roberts, uh, while trying to unveil some features that make Xfinity TV service a little more like internet TV, obviously realized that everybody wanted to hear his opinion on net neutrality, so he met it head on. Uh, among the things he said was, we've had 20 years of a set of rules that have built, I think, this wonderful world that we all enjoy. <laughs> I mean, that's happiness. true. It's true. Uh, well, yeah, here's here's the thing. And, and Robert's actually is trying to be positive. Uh, he's saying, I agree with all of the principles that President Obama set out. I don't think you want to do it with Title II. Uh, and that's what all of these guys are saying is, you don't want to think, you, we don't want to do it with Title II. Problem with all of this debate is that we're debating entirely the wrong things. But Molly, I'm going to let you go first. We're going to get to that. Yeah. How, <laughs> how are you feeling about the way this debate is going? I mean, I, you know, I think it's funny because it, it is easy in some ways to say, look, this is exactly the same debate that it's been for the 10 years that we've been talking about it, which is, can you really trust the companies with that stand to make all of the money and that stand that have arguably monopolies in some areas of this country and that have not always been good actors when it comes to their stewardship of this increasingly invaluable resource, that being the internet. So I think from that perspective, the argument really hasn't changed that much, but now it's become much more complicated because the conversation is so much about access to uh, over-the-top video, to TV, right, to Netflix, to CBS services, to streaming video, to Hulu. And then it's been further confused by all these conversations about interchanges and, you know, peering connections and Netflix paying Comcast for guaranteed service. So it's gotten more confused and weirdly more political than ever. But at the end of the day, I think it still comes down to the simple question of having a really good broadband infrastructure and whether we can trust these guys to build it without all of their sort of like commercial desires getting in the way. Right. I, I, and, and I I even would say commercial desires are fine. In fact, commercial desires can, can spur innovation. That's why we have Netflix. It's not because Reed Hastings had some kind of altruistic need to make House of Cards. It's because he wanted to make a company that would make money, right? And there's no reason that ISPs shouldn't be able to make money. I think that's one of the things that, that ends up being a problem on these these sorts of debates is that it you, you tend to want to break it down as for the people for the business, right? And right. that it doesn't need to be broken down that way. In fact, that's not the way it works best on the internet. The way that, uh, from my understanding, transit providers and backbone providers have worked is providing business motivation to interconnection. Mm -hmm. And I think where it has really broken down, and I've said this a million times, is that the ISPs have gotten too much leverage. Uh, the, the the bigger ISPs, you know, the Comcast, the Time Warners of the world, have gotten too much leverage. Now, what do you think of 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 that? I mean, if we were to say like, let's break up the ISPs, I think that'd be going too far. But how do you fix that? 
Yeah, I mean, the only way that you're ever going to fix that is through competition, and I think we've seen over and over that we do not have a sufficiently competitive landscape. You didn't really even see these guys starting to invest seriously in their networks until pretty recently when they started to realize that they were having significant competition pressures from wireless, you know, from high-speed wireless, and that they couldn't deliver Netflix. I mean, crazily enough, the, the, the push to upgrade their infrastructure came from companies like Netflix and from them streaming long-form video content, which they apparently just didn't see coming. But until then, they were busy sort of like creating fiefdoms. I mean, Comcast controls a huge part of the market and is trying to buy Time Warner. Like, you just don't have enough legitimate choice in this country and enough legitimate competition. And I actually don't think that wireless is true competition to wired broadband at this point. So they haven't had the right incentive to build out their broadband networks. If they do, if the free market actually worked and they had plenty of competition, then I think we would have broadband networks we'd all be pretty happy with. Right. I, we had lots of competition in the dial-up era. And in the dial-up era, everybody could use the phone system because it was a common carrier to run their ISP. Then DSL came along and the DSL networks were under common carrier, under Title II, uh, forced to unbundle and open up their networks to competitors. What happened was they delayed that. That is when the push yep. for classification of ISPs as information services came. And they, without using regulation, essentially put in really difficult ways of putting in DSL. I remember trying to get DSL installed in 2000 in San Francisco. It was a nightmare because they said, well, uh, if you're using, you can't use that kind of box. You can only use this kind of box. And, and they put in, in incredible amounts of roadblocks to prevent competition. And since the regulatory agencies were swinging away from common carrier anyway, they didn't bother to follow up and, and try to change the situation. So now you have a situation where the ISPs were entrenched monopolies in their beginnings, right? Mm -hmm. All of these local telcos were monopolies at one time. All of the cable companies, for the most part, were given monopoly franchises at one time. And they have benefited from that. They also benefit from local regulation. There's a great article on Wired where it talks about how difficult it is for any anyone to come in against the incumbent. If yeah. you try to actually roll out a, a new ISP, you face tons of, of bureaucratic nightmare. Uh, you face all kinds of local fees. You face lawsuits from the incumbent who's right. like, well, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to use our polls and, and those polls are owned by us. Most of these are frivolous and get thrown out of court, but they, they cost you they money. You have time and money, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> essentially, we don't have enough competition. Now, some people. Are trying to, I've got five providers. Do you have five providers that provide you 10 megabits per second or more even? Right. Uh, do you have, you know, do you, you definitely don't have five providers that give you gigabit? Most people feel like they don't have more than two choices and that those two choices are basically not much of a choice. Yeah. In a lot of places, it's cable, faster internet versus DSL, slow internet. Yeah, so, and that's just not a reasonable option. So in my opinion, if you, if you, if you look at that and you say, okay, well, what can we do for competition? There's two, there's two ways it's worked elsewhere. In Europe, mm -hmm. they unbundled the loop. They said, look, you can't own the infrastructure and be the ISP at the same time. And that has worked. That has worked fairly well. Yep. That is not the only way to do it, though. And, and when we did the, the special uh, this summer, we found out that in Korea, they just made it easy for people to invest and, and roll out infrastructure. And so they, have, they had five at one time. Uh, fiber networks in Seoul, Korea, because the government actually worked the opposite of the way local governments work here. They said, yeah, we'll make it easy for you to run infrastructure. And it's not efficient. They all have their own lines and they all have their own boxes, but they have competition. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we did the worst of both sides. We let a monopoly build up all the infrastructure with a lot of government help, sometimes subsidized funds, sometimes just easements. Yep. And then we made it really hard for anyone to come in and compete with them because the cities are broke. And they're like, well, we want our taxes. We're not going to make it easy. The incumbent telcos are like, that's right. Don't make it easy for them. Make it really hard. And nobody can break that log jam. At the same time, any kind of regulatory agency that would come in and suggest unbundling is just going to get firebombed 
yeah. at the national level. Yes, they're going to get creamed. And then the, the result is that we're now having a conversation about reclassifying the internet as a Title II utility, which is the wrong law to apply. These are, the, these are rules that were, as we've talked about, not designed for something like the internet. They're just not going to be efficient. They're not going to cover the interconnect and peering agreements that are already sort of the subject of so much controversy. And it's just not, it's the wrong solution. And it is an overregulation. I mean, I think... You and I probably agree and have been saying for a decade that the worst thing that could happen was that these guys would behave in such a way, in such an untrustworthy way, that the government would come in and overregulate the internet. I actually do not think that we need that, you know, that ideally we would foster enough competition, maybe through subsidies or some sort of um, specific incentive programs, that what we would get is faster broadband for all and that we would have, you know, like a rising tide floats all boats. I feel like there's a part of me that could be arguing for some kind of a trickle-down thing, and that makes me uncomfortable, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is that ultimately, we don't need, we don't want a bunch of government regulation that will not help the internet. It will not, I agree. Unless it is like a new law, a new set of rules that are crafted specifically for this very unique entity. And that yeah. what we really need is just faster broadband because we also don't need fast lanes if we just have faster broadband. That doesn't affect traffic shaping. Like traffic shaping and prioritizing video and prioritizing emergency channels, none of that has to be in violation of the spirit of net neutrality. It isn't, right? Net, net neutrality doesn't say that you have to treat every packet equally and that you have to deliver them equally. It says that you have to treat all the content equally and not favor one over the other and not charge smaller companies a, a, an essentially a tax to get onto the internet and make it prohibitive for them to do so in an unfair way. So all we want is faster broadband and then it will work fine for everybody. It yeah. will. Now, a lot of people say, oh yeah, it, Brian Roberts was one of them. We've had 20 years of a set of rules that have built a wonderful world. The thing is, it's not a horrible world, right? And, no. and, and that, that's where the uh, people have started to divide up into camps. You're wrong and you're wrong. It's a disaster. Well, it's not a disaster. So it's easy for the other side to say, no, it's not a disaster. Right. We have, you know, 50 megabit per second internet available in lots of places. Mm -hmm. But there was the New America survey that came out in June that looked at all of the top 24 cities for broadband, some in the US, some not. And they determined that the United States pretty much pays more for slower internet than the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Highest ranked city was Seoul with a private ISP. Number two, or actually tied for number one, Hong Kong with a private ISP. Tokyo with a private ISP. You know who else was up there? Chattanooga with a municipal ISP. Kansas really? City, Google Fiber. Lafayette with a municipal ISP. Then you get Zurich. Then you get Bristol, Virginia with a municipal ISP. So why is it that the rest of the world, these so-called socialist countries, are having private ISPs give them the fastest broadband? We're here in the United States where we have open enterprise and we've had 20 years of wonderful rules. Only the government-run stuff is giving you the good broadband at the right price. That's not right. That's not right. the way it's supposed to work. That's and, then, and, and then all the ISPs are going after all the municipal laws saying, well, we can't actually compete with them. So let's just pass laws to make them illegal. To make them to make municipal broadband illegal. Exactly. I mean, it's a it's a just a bizarre situation when you think about it. And it is exactly what happens when you don't have competition. And so every conversation that this comes down to has to include the competition element like you have to make that a crucial part of the plan because otherwise you will just continue to regulate virtual monopolies and I don't think that we are to the point yet where like I said where wireless can be considered that competition and so that to me that's a straw man like they still charge so much for access that to use a, a wireless hotspot as your full-time data connection is absurd yeah no, and, and you and I were talking on the phone yesterday, and I, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to try to pretend like this is a new idea, but we were both saying, really, the solution is new legislation, right? Yeah. Title II isn't right because it's meant for phone, and mm -hmm. you have to forebear the crap out of it to make it even fit. Title I is also right, not right, because the internet is more than just an information service, and it's, it, that was not meant for the internet either. Let's, let's actually create a title that governs internet. And let's do it right. That is politically impossible right now, unfortunately. It is. I mean, I don't necessarily, I, I 
have zero faith that such a law could be written in a way that would be palatable to anybody. I guess my question is, what would that law say? I mean, what, so what are the parts that need to be governed? Because realistically, I can't believe I'm going to argue this, but realistically, mm. if we had sufficient competition, would there be a need for strong net neutrality regulation? Because in a scenario where companies and consumers can choose alternatives, except then do you, do you get like balkanized internet service where some companies say, I'm not going to be available on Comcast because they want to charge too much for a fast lane prioritization? I don't know. Well, I mean, would it obviate the need for a net neutrality regulation if we didn't have to worry about somebody messing with packet delivery? Here's where I think the ISPs are making a good argument. They keep saying, look, there haven't been any violations. And you can argue there have in a couple of specific cases. And but certainly for the most of part, there haven't been. And on the backbone side, there haven't been. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there, there have been like nasty business negotiations recently because the ISPs are getting more leverage than they've ever had before. But mm -hmm. I would argue that yes, if you w when we've actually had competition, no one was talking about net neutrality yeah. as a, as anything of interest. So how do you get the competition? Is the thing I've been struggling with, and I haven't come up with an answer until today. And I'm not saying it's the answer, but the first thing that finally I looked at and said, wait, that could work, is take away all of these local rules that make it difficult to roll out. You don't mm -hmm. even have to use subsidies. Go If you want openness, go open the infrastructure, open the municipalities for anyone to be able to roll out. If a city votes and decides it wants to build its own, great, let that city do it. Mm -hmm. If a city wants to say, you know what, we're gonna really lower the, uh, the, the bureaucratic barriers, we're gonna lower the fees, which is a kind of a subsidy, yeah. but we're gonna, we're gonna lower the fees and we're gonna make it simple. And the telcos won't like this because they don't want people to come in and compete, but mm -hmm. open the access to the ground. That is, yeah. I, I read over and over today when I was looking through this, that is what every person who has tried to build an open free enterprise ISP has run into is permits, construction crews, restrictions on equipment, purchasing right. capacity from transit providers. It's, it's expensive but it doesn't all have to be expensive. And if you can make it easier, say, you know what, we're gonna open our municipality for people. Google has done us a favor by showing it can happen because what they did is they said, look, we're a 500 pound gorilla, so we're gonna get the municipality to give us a break. And they did it in Kansas City and they did it in Austin. What happened in Austin when they got the municipality to ease the restrictions? All of a sudden, AT&T, and I think it's CenturyLink, started rolling out gigabit fiber too. Right, absolutely. I mean, that makes perfect sense, and it reminds me of this great TED Talk I watched that was about um, uh, on the topic of the city-state, right? It said, like, we need to stop talking about solutions at the national or, e or certainly at the global, but even at the national level, and start talking about solution building at the sort of city-state level. Like, cities, mayors are the people who have the power to actually make change that can, can kind of sweep across. And so it makes a lot of sense that if you say at the smaller, because what you're talking about is a version of the last mile problem. Mm -hmm. Like, you can even build a pretty fast wireless network, but you still might have a last mile concern. And so it makes perfect sense that if you're, a, if you're able to ease the base to competition on a city-by-city -city basis, that you could kind of dig the ground out from under these big telcos. Yeah, literally. Yeah, I like it. So, so what do we do here? How do we, yeah, exactly, literally. So how do we like write this up and like make government do that? Because I'm afraid they're going to screw it up. Like I am right. actually now kind of weirdly, now I'm worried that they're going to classify it as a Title II and it's going to be like, it's, it's going to be like a mess. Well, and the thing is, if they classify it as Title II, it won't be more of a mess than it is now. It'll just be a different mess in lots of different ways. It's, it's not going to solve the problem at all. I don't think it's going to be a disaster, though. It's just, yeah. it's just more muck. And I want to get yeah. us out of the muck. Right, exactly. Like, so, go, yeah. the, go the Google route, right? Just come around the backside with fiber. That's the next question. That's the perfect next question is, how do, how do you open up localities so that more people can build ISPs. What what do you do? You can you can campaign on your local level and have, actually have a much better chance of swaying somebody, but it's still not guaranteed. Maybe there's some kind of national legislation that would give incentives uh, to municipalities to open up their 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 regulations, their beer, you know, and lower their fees, kind of like the way the highway administration works. I don't know if that's a good idea. Maybe it's not. Uh, that's but that, the, that's certainly the most expedient, right? And probably mm -hmm. the the most efficient 
in a, in terms of a large scale because otherwise you'll just have those the the entrenched monopolies dig in further in the places where they have all the control. Yeah. Because I do think fundamentally the conversation about net neutrality comes down to trying to protect the internet from bad actors and and behaviors that are so financially motivated, right? Like this is what what separates a monopoly from a good business is that when the financially motivated behaviors start to be anti-competitive. It's out of proportion. And yeah. It's out of proportion. Exactly. Nobody's saying that businesses shouldn't be able to make money. What we're saying is that there should be enough of you competing that we start to have that consumer, that fundamental consumer level trust that we know you're not going to try to screw us because you can't screw me because I can go to somebody else. Yeah. We do not have that on a broad scale now. And that's why we're worried about things like that's why we're worried about bad actors, bad behavior, about about money grubbing, basically, for lack of a. And if if you have sufficient competition, I think you could make an argument that you don't need net neutrality regulation. <gasps> yeah, I think you're right. I mean, <laughs> I'd be great. I you the only thing that I can think of that's an objection to this is people saying, oh, but you know, this is taking away the natural way business is gone. Comcast has has worked hard and invested to get where they are today. Why take that away from them? Why have the state no. take that away from them? And because we paid the, for that. The lie is that, yeah, Comcast, AT&T, Verizon, none of them got they, where they are today with open competition. They all started with government intervention giving them an advantage. Exactly. In and even if that were the case, companies still become anti-competitive monopolies and get in trouble for it when they overreach. See Microsoft, see the train, you know, the train companies. Like, the monopolies can still come into being, and that's why we have regulation in the first place. An unregulated business, completely unregulated business, has always produced bad actors. Yeah. Like, otherwise we wouldn't have business regulation in the first place. So I think, I think some light net neutrality guidelines are perfectly reasonable. I don't think Section 706 gives you the right way to do it. I don't think Title II gives you the right way to do it. Uh, but even if you can find the right way to do it there, it's not going to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. the, the, the lie that Netflix and the telcos and the ISPs want you to believe is that the government can fix this. What they want is that they continue to allow the status quo to happen yep. so that no one can compete with them because yeah. they, have, they have these natural advantages that are almost unassailable. And, and it, because, and, and and you make the, I mean, we need to make the point over and over that the reason they have those advantages is because we helped them pay for that yeah. with our money. <laughs> they were, they were given that step up. That was not, yeah. yeah. And, and we've come along, we have come a long way in some ways from the 10 year old argument about conflict of interest. Like we, that did not materialize. Thank goodness that right. Comcast prioritized its own internet TV services over Netflix. And you have people getting into the online video delivery space every day. Right, and they are all counting on this infrastructure to be able to deliver the product that they are investing heavily in. So they obviously believe that it's going to be okay on some level, or that they're not going to be throttled in an unfair way. So I think ultimately all it comes down to is infrastructure and competition. And let me tell you, folks, as soon as you start to feel that any of these arguments are against your side, you've stopped thinking productively. This is not a one side or another issue. Uh, unless you're a, a large company trying to protect your, your your current profit margins. This is not a Republican issue. It's not a Democratic issue. It is an internet issue. It's, it's about internet management. So try your hardest, no matter what side you normally are on, not to get caught up in that crap because it's oh only going to confuse the issue. Oh, you're the best, Tom. I love that you think that that could happen. Like people all split into right and wrong over freaking tea bags, dude. Like we can't, we're doomed. <laughs> Green tea? <laughs> Or How about this? Tea. Don't argue with anybody about this on the internet, and then maybe you can continue to <laughs> about it. <laughs> All right, let's uh, take a look at the calendar. Bitcasa Unlimited Storage Plan ends tomorrow, November 15th. So hurry, get your files out. Uh, and if you missed out on the one phone from OnePlus, they're going to give you another chance to order on Monday, November 17th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. GMT. Convert accordingly. Also, Monday, Polish American Innovation Week begins with events in Los Angeles and Berkeley, along with Palo Alto, California. Very cool. Our pick of the day comes from Rolando in Paraguay, who says, you said your mean my pants pocket. He means pocket the app or you save articles to read later. He said your pocket is full of articles you wanted to read but never got a chance to go over them. It happens, but you may want to try the TTS feature of pocket and then you can listen to them whenever you are unable to read. 
Good tip. I didn't even think about that. So when I'm done with my audiobooks and my podcasts, <laughs> I could do that. Uh, <laughs> it won't be the most appealing voice you ever heard. Most no, likely. it won't. But, you know, it's better than nothing. And these articles are sure most of the podcasts I listen to. So that's a good good tip. Thanks, Rolando. Send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. And you can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. All right, we got a few messages. I know we're running long. Are you, are, are you cool st sticking around for a couple more minutes? Yeah, I think, totally. I think it was worth it for that I conversation. Think so too. That was a good talk. Yeah, good it was. Talk. Good talk. Good talk. Uh, <laughs> we talked about Start TLS uh, being killed by Cricket Wireless, which is owned by AT and T, a couple of times now on the show. And John had some thoughts on that. Hey, Tom, Jenny, uh, Lennon, and Molly. This is John from Arctic, New Hampshire calling um, in response to yesterday talking about the um, AT&T stripping out Start TLS, um, and we were talking about how it had either had to be malice or incompetence, but not both. I actually have a theory that it could be both, um, but for different responsible parties. Um, there's been pictures going on for a couple of years, like the hack leave with the NSA or the FBI, I can't recall which one, um, with stacks of Cisco routers and switches and firewall in their, you know, in their offices, um, supposedly redoing the firmware on them. Um, so if some of those had gone out to AT&T, there's no reason why they were, you know, maliciously stripped out Star TLS and AT&T um, wasn't competent enough to catch it. Um, anyway, that's just my theory. Um, thanks, guys. Love the show. Bye. That's a good theory, John. Mm. That's an interesting theory. Because uh, Patrick Wolf had pointed out that uh, some, he had he had run into a router at a place he worked where Cisco did an update, and the update somehow was stripping out uh, TLS, and they had a reason for it he couldn't remember. Uh, but they didn't notice it at first. And he was like, maybe that's what happened to Cricket. But maybe it wasn't an accident. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, Steve in the OC writes with a suggestion that when I report on smart device comments, uh, commands, which we always have a problem if I want to say the words Google and OK in the reverse order. He says, Tom, if you just learned how to say Siri in French, the rest of us will figure it out. You won't trigger our devices, and that way only one person has to learn French instead of making everybody else learn French. Since I listen to your show on my Nexus 5 with earbuds, you never trigger the, the phrase. That <laughs> You're right. This has actually become an issue. Like, it is. The, the voice recognition is just good enough that it happens. You know what I like, actually? I have been using the Moto, the Moto X, and you can customize the name, uh, the wake up name. And I love that because then it's not a generic. Like, I, it, I couldn't get them to confirm this, but it sounds like in Lollipop that's a possibility. I feel like you I might read be able to that, that was true. Things. Yeah. 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 They were kind of like, I think that might be possible. And I was like, <laughs> why are you being so quiet? But anyway, I named my Moto X Manservant because <laughs> hilarious. Like they want, it's supposed to be sort of a similar number of um, syllables. So I say, okay, man, servant, and then my phone wakes up. But then nobody can just be talking about like, okay, Google, you know, and mess it up. Right. And you just turned off somebody's phone just now. I'm just looking to say, oh, I'm so sorry. I tried to pause. I was, but you know what? Somehow the okay, man, servant thing didn't work on my moto. Oh. Servant. Yeah, it doesn't always work. Xbox definitely works. And you don't even have to do anything. You just say the word. And it's like, we can't avoid, we, I'm yeah. not going to never say the word Xbox. So it's, sometimes it's going to happen. I have to say, boy, Xbox, sorry. No, you know what? I'm just going to stay on topic because I know we're already late, but it's gotten so cheap now. Yeah. And you know what? I think the, the firmware updates have really been making the voice activation work. I was yeah. too lazy the other day. I already told the story, but I was too lazy the other day to go get the remote. And I realized it wasn't on TV and I successfully was able to use my voice to switch it to the TV. Uh, but. That's how Microsoft rolls. Like they put out this thing, mm -hmm. kind of junky. And then the thing about that they do successfully is they correct yeah. quickly. Except for the Zoom. No, I liked it. I know. It's gorgeous. <laughs> I'm the uh, one. Finally, Michael wrote, the other day you mentioned you use LibreOffice. I've created some tutorials on how to use LibreOffice Calc, Writer, Draw, and Base that go into a little more depth than the average LibreOffice tutorials. Being a LibreOffice user yourself, you may be interested in some of the topics covered, like how to create an index using LibreOffice Writer, how to create floor plans with measurements using LibreOffice Draw, or creating a search form using LibreOffice Base. These are all explained in my video tutorials and everything is free. So take a look if you get a chance. YouTube.com slash user slash the frugal computer guy tutorial overviews downloads etc uh that's cool i figured you know what there's probably some people out there who've tried LibreOffice and went i don't know i don't want to do the learning curve so maybe this will help 
if uh, people can't afford Microsoft Office still, you can use LibreOffice. Also, that's so awesome that he did all those tutor tutorials. Yeah, thanks, Michael. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And thank you, Molly Wood. Good My convo. Pleasure. Oh, that was so great. Yay. I know. I'm like, every time I do this, I'm like, okay, I'm, I need to do this more often. And also, this yes. should be like an hour. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have, especially with topics like this, right? Uh, but there is more Molly Wood out there on the internet. Twitter.com slash Molly Wood. Uh, mm -hmm. Go to nytimes.com slash machine learning. Is that right? That's right. nytimes.com slash machine learning. And you will find um, videos there as well. Excellent. So, so for those of you who constantly tweet me and want to know if I'm doing any video... <laughs> I am. Actually, yeah, if you go to YouTube and search Mollywood New York Times too, there's a really nice, like it's really easy to watch all the videos. Cool. Check it out, folks. Yeah. And now we are going to check out what Len Peralta has been working on. Yay! My favorite part of the show. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, net neutrality <laughs> net neutrality always gives me a headache. Um, and I think that the easiest thing to do is that we just get a bandwidth fairy. And, a bandwidth fairy. <laughs> and that's the bandwidth fairy, of course, this week. Of course, is Molly. I recognize Wood. that bandwidth fairy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And she's going to she's going to break the internet in a good way. That's and, right. Uh, and uh, and and break it free for all of us, so we can get as much streaming video and video <laughs> games and all kinds of stuff. She's the bandwidth fairy, and it's available to my online store right now. Take that, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> break the internet, break the internet wide read, open. You have to read your your uh, your voice bubble. Oh, it, it, it's oh. Go ahead. No, yeah. make Molly read it. Make Molly yeah. read it. Molly, can you read that? <laughs> totally. And you get bandwidth. Wait, it went away. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. I'm putting it online to stay. Okay. There you go. And you get bandwidth. And you get bandwidth. And you get bandwidth. Let's break the internet, my pretties. <laughs> ah, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> It's awesome, and uh, it is available right now in my online store. And since we're running long, I have one more thing to say. One, um, we have one more week uh, to get drawn in to the DTNS uh, first anniversary print. If you go to patreon.com forward slash len, it's the 250 level. And uh, there are still a bunch of things left. There's still a bunch of, a bunch of uh, uh, slots left. So if you want to get drawn into the anniversary poster... Please go and do that today. Patreon.com forward slash one. Excellent. Do that. Uh, and thank yeah. our patrons at 189 folks found enough value in the show to give it at least a five cents a day back. So we appreciate that. If you think, you know what, I could kick a little into, go to dailytechnewsshow.com slash donate. If you can't, don't worry about it. And you, you can still participate in the show at the subreddit and things like that. Producer Jenny needs your help. She's building the year-end best of show. Uh, and whether you're contributing to Patreon or not, she'd like your opinion on the best moments on DTNS so far. It's a Google Doc. Go in and add the date of your favorite moment, an approximate time it happened in the show. YouTube video handy for that. Or if you don't have time, just email us. Uh, your favorite moments, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. I know that Doc had a restriction problem yesterday, but I think that's fixed. So go to bit.ly slash DTNS best of, all one word, bit.ly slash DTNS best of. Don't forget, you can have a voice in what stories we cover at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can give us a call, 512-59-DAILY, 512-593-2459. And listen to the show live, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 Pacific on alphageekradio.com. Our website, dailytechnewsshow.com. We'll be back Monday with the first appearance as an official contributor by Justin Robert Young. See you then. Woo! This podcast is part of the Frog Pants Studios Network. For more information about this and other shows, visit frogpants.com. Audio program so good, it's like you're there. <sighs> that was fun. I can't stop looking at my bandwidth fairy self. <laughs> I mean, I like that, Molly. It's an old problem. <laughs> is, this, is this considered narcissistic? If I, just... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know I either. So. But I, no, it's not fair. Everybody, it's, it's like Narcissist Friday. Like everybody's allowed one little bit. Of week, yeah, but they're just like, you know don't what? worry about it. Like, I'm awesome. so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she would enjoy it. Oh my gosh. <laughs>
Be sure not to miss Narcissist Fridays. You know who you are. <laughs> you know I'm talking to you. <laughs> you have you have Teamy T and the NCF. There you go. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Oh, it's glorious! Great. It's a great oh photo. All yeah, right. you guys, we, I'm, we're such nerds that we literally called each other to just like talk because we were like texting about net neutrality, completely, just totally like, oh, I can't believe this article. Oh, can you believe this? And then it was like, we just need to talk about this on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, man, we are nerdy. <laughs> but it never gets old. Never gets old. It, yeah, it, it has been t- almost 10 years of net neutrality talk. Yeah, dude. We're old as hell. <laughs> I remember, I remember you know sitting I next to... Himself. I remember sitting next to Craig Newmark on an airplane from Austin uh, just by at random chance... And asking him, like, have you heard about this thing, net neutrality? And it was like the week that Randall, uh, is it Randall Stevenson from AT&T? Randall Stevens. Yeah, Randall Stevens, Stevens sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, had said, uh, like, Google wants a free lunch. Uh, yes, was that, totally. That comment. And back in the day, it was like almost easier because it was just like, wait a second. You already get paid to deliver traffic yeah. and then you want to get paid again to make sure it gets there. I mean, it was such a like straight up mafioso argument, you know, like, yeah, yeah. You know, everybody pays for uh, garbage service and then but you got to pay a little extra to make sure that uh, we actually come to yes. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> I was trying to think, OK, I, I didn't use this in the show because I think it's a little hackneyed. Uh but what Comcast is doing on the interconnect front, which we, we I think, wisely stayed away from that yeah, whole God. debacle because it's a different thing. Uh, but what they're doing on the interconnect, what if you could do it? Let's say Comcast had a streaming service that you could only buy through their pipe, right? It was like, yeah. oh, if you're a Comcast customer, you can get this special service. And you owned a really big apartment building. So you were the ISP customer. And then everybody in your apartment building could sign up for the Comcast service individually. And a bunch of people were doing it. And then your apartment building got so vast that you went to Comcast and said, you know, you need to pay me now because I've got all these customers in my apartment building that are paying you for your streaming service. Hmm. Well, That's what Comcast we- is doing to level three. Right, totally. Couldn't municipalities become a version of that? Of the apartment building? Of the apartment building? Well, that's interesting. I don't know. Could they just like uh, start a program that's like, hey, we're going to, you know, do like low income housing for internet and be a big customer? Well, and then say, listen, we're the municipality. Like, we maintain the infrastructure oh, around these that, lines. Yeah. You know, I mean, they could sort of say, like... shame if something listen. happened to your uh, telephone poles there. Exactly! Like, <laughs> <laughs> totally! <laughs> Take back the power, city-state! <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like it that, like, that this is an issue where traditional roles of, like, who thinks what is a good idea is completely reversed. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it's not often that you hear people... Uh, never mind. I'm about to make generalities, but I'm just fascinated by the idea that that it is probably the best idea at this point to leave it to the states, leave it to the yeah. city. That is not something I personally would often say. Right. The bandwidth will rise again. Well, is that what you're saying? I'm, I'm, yeah. I hear you. That I'm a secret states writer because I mean I'm you know not on every issue, but to some extent because I came from Montana, right? Like, I just once in a while find myself, like, firmly on the side of states' rights. I'm like, well, like... I mean, I do think that there is a place for national-level incentive, like we were talking about earlier. I could see that being valuable. But I could also see the, yeah, like, take back the night, municipalities. Why can I hear myself on, like, from, like, four different places? I don't know. Super Uh-oh. confused. Was that just started to happen just now? No, I heard it during the show, actually. I could hear myself, like, just a little tiny echo. And then just mm. now I heard it, like, a bunch of places. I was like, ah. Oh, weird. Well, I have to get going because I have to go. Um, look at that snow. No. Look at, the, well, look no. at that lens window. Yeah. Let's see. Can you see it? Oh, wow. Yeah, there it is. That's the snow. Beautiful. Unbelievable. No, oh, no, it's not. Crazy. When, during the <laughs> no. show, it was coming down like you wouldn't believe, so. Really? Unbelievable. All right. Well, yeah, you better scamper and dig yourself out. Right on. Thank you so much. It's always great to see you, Molly. Thanks, Len. Great to see you. Thanks, Len. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you. All right. Bye. Bye. That was maybe my favorite drawing ever.
Oh. Just when I thought I had a favorite drawing ever. I know. He always outdoes himself. Oh, He's like no. the greatest. So the greatest. I'm so lucky I'm, that he's continuing to do to be willing to do it too, you know. Yeah, and I am super excited for that poster. It's gonna be like the, like the the Simpsons poster with all the characters. Only it's gonna be like Tom and all the people. And oh, you mean the DTNS, uh, the DTNS one that he was talking about at the end? Yeah, yeah. we're all in this together. That's amazing. We're that all in this together. The bomb! Like, what kind of show is great enough that it has like its own in-house illustrator, basically? Right. <laughs> so cool. Freaking awesome. Um, right. I also better scamper pretty soon because I have to pee because I drank a bunch of tea during the show. <laughs> <laughs> and my editor I am to me in the middle of it, so I guess I should figure out oh, what okay. that's about. Time to get back to work. Good job, guys. Uh, but great show. I'm super yes. glad that we had that, um, that pre call. Yeah, me too. Like that yeah. that it it did I was worried like oh I hope this doesn't like take the wind out of our sails but it did the opposite. I don't think it did at all. It really helped focus it that yeah. and the ongoing argument that I've been having over email which yeah. caused me to be doing like extra. <laughs> it's great. It's like I'm like okay, I got this. Yeah, Although I am works. finding myself going in unexpected directions with regard to net neutrality, which is interesting. It's a complex issue and that's why I think we the one thing that we said that I'm 100% sure certain of is we need new law. Yes. Like the totally. internet doesn't fit any of the old law. It right. Like doesn't. I dis I disagree, President Obama. Like yeah. I'm glad that you're talking about it, I guess, mm -hmm. except that it just makes it more of a partisan issue almost. For him to wade in is almost destructive in some yeah, ways. In some um, ways. It certainly but, turned it into the Obamacare football instead of a, a reasonable debate. Although like Obamacare is working. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bum, bum, uh, here comes the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Just drop that. And well, see you ya. still can. I don't that note. Okay. Bye. Have All right, guys. Weekend. All right. Thanks, Molly. Take care. I'm going to watch the show with Justin. I'm excited. All right. Bye. Cool. All right. We got some good titles. I already, I'm already exporting. I picked one. What'd you choose? I picked Beatmaster, Bias Neutrality. <laughs> nice. That's See, neutral thought, like Korea was pretty close. Uh, I would have gone with, and you get internet, and you get internet, or broadband. You get bandwidth, but, and you get bandwidth. Yeah, that's the one. With ex Only with exclamation points, but it is a little long. Bias Neutrality, I like that. Oh, oh, da, da, da. Thanks, Suncast. Suncast just thanked us on Twitter. Oh, the Twitters. So no oh. current geek this afternoon. Oh, yeah, I wondered about that. Scott's uh, out of pocket. Yeah, well, you know, out of pocket is supposed to mean I'm paying my own way. I mean, I, I know it means out of pocket expenses. I don't know how expenses. it became, like, and it became. Now it means yeah. he's not in the office. Mm -hmm. but, I, um, uh, to me, it just was always something we said when we were about to go cover something in an area with no cell phone service, which is okay, I'm going to be out of pocket for blah, blah, blah. I think the transition comes from somebody saying like, yeah, I'm going to be in a place where, you know, I'm, I'm going to be on my own, not the company won't be paying for me, so I'll be out of pocket. And then mm -hmm. that feels similar to I'm going to be away, you won't be able to contact me, right? Mm -hmm. There's a similarity there. Maybe that's the the history of that anyway yes he's out of pocket <laughs> you're right <laughs> he's not here yeah. he's uh he's doing something else i don't i don't know what the conflict was actually but um Ooh. we'll be back next week cool Duh. i got sleepy all of a sudden it's the friday sleepies Did that? What? Why does that look like that? Mm. <laughs> Live editing. Live editing. 
Wake up. Nope. Wake up. That works. Okay. I don't know why I did that. It gave me a little red X on the file for a second. Mm. Yeah. That's a Dropbox thing, I think. But okay. Well, you got any gum? Um, on the plus side, I just uploaded a video to YouTube and it was blazingly fast. Ah, very nice. So I'm back in that game now. The only That's bad exciting. part of that is once you catch up on the YouTube channel for Daily Tech News Show, I won't be able to find our net neutrality special video. As I know. Because <laughs> right now it's at the very bottom of the page. We could make a playlist for it where it yeah, takes we should. to the top. Yeah, That's let's do that. It's a good idea. I was surprised. I was like, oh, it's still it's still on the page there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's let's feature it. Yeah, that's a good one to feature. Most diff. And this one. Yeah. This For sure. You know, Veronica was talking about net neutrality on uh, Take Part Live yesterday. Nice. It's, it's in the and, news. Mm -hmm. It sure is. is. Did I not add the... Oh, man. Sorry, folks. I forgot to add the um, album art. Only the AUG users will get it now. Uh, too many cheese breads for lunch. Make Jenny too many yawn. cheese. Too many cheese. Those little at the too Brazilian bread, place, they have like little cheese, cheese. little round cheese breads. Have you watched Too Many Cooks yet? No, not yet. It I is part of your essential internet in. education. Yeah, I'm on it. It's part of your daily breakfast whole, of meme. <laughs> I have this whole list queued up in a browser that's like Benedict Cumberbatch imitating 11 people in 60 oh, yeah. seconds. I just watched that this morning. Yeah, so I have yeah the, Too Many Cooks takes 11 Friday. minutes too. So you got to yeah. gotta make sure you that's got time. That's the end of the weeker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That and... Uh, what the hells? What else do oh, I have still queued up? So that's why. Oh, Bonfire of the Inanities, the history of the New York Times style section. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I've got some good reading. Oh, best game idea to play with friends over Skype. Best ship. Oh. Casey McKinnon was asking for ideas, and Leslie Ran had that one. Smart. Nice. Casey McKinnon. Why do I know that name? Why, that name is like getting confused with. Oh, Casey uh, has been around the internets for a long time. Uh, we've had her on Cord Killers a bunch and on Night Attack. It's like one of the where you think you totally and then you realize you don't know it and then you're curious. Oh, there you go. I got Damn. it. Kate McKinnon, that's right. Too many cooks. Did it to myself. So wait, but, have you um, read the Science of Interstellar yet? You've already read it. Is that no. what you were saying to me? No. no, I wasn't ever talking about Interstellar. You were before. When? Earlier, when you said you are talking to the host of Sword and Laser, so I took that to mean that you no. have read the book called The Science no. of Interstellar. You said you said nobody reads books. Oh, <laughs> that's what I, I was. I didn't reacting. say that. I would never say that. Someone else said that. That wasn't no, me. well, you you said something like that. You said no. something like like nobody. I you said something like uh, I can't read books anymore, but I'm really enjoying this one, the Science of Interstellar. Did I, I didn't say that. Anymore. No, 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 no. All right, mm -mm. that's why I read. I, I read like I, two books a day. I'm like a book book crazy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You could check Alpha point. Geek Radio. I feel mm. like I never would have said, I would have maybe said sarcastically, nobody reads books, but I read a lot of books. Maybe it was sarcastic. Yeah. Someone else said, nobody reads books anymore. That oh. was not me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is that there was an assault on 
books. But it didn't come from me. Put you were forth. telling me no, about someone who you was assaulting books. Said then <laughs> let, I thought you said you to... was okay, Spider. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it recorded. I know. Please go back and check it out. I stand check by the my tape. position. Check the tape. I stand by my position. <laughs> I love books. I will be reading books at the end. Of, oh, you know who's calling? I know who's calling. Do you know who's calling? I got to take this call. Is it Time Warner Cable? No, it's it's people who are coming to the farmer's market. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so I got to go. All right. Well, Bye. Thanks. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.